Okay, so I'm going to start 11.1 .1 now. Um, so this chapter is about using power series to solve differential equations, and this is often because, um, and I think I've mentioned this before, but the functions that we talk about, like the, the elementary functions, which th these are like the class of all nice functions like polynomials and square roots and exponentials and trig functions and, and really all of the specific functions that have names that we've been talking about. Um, most differential equations don't have any solution that can be expressed in terms of elementary functions. Of course, that may be surprising because we've been focusing on differential equations that do have solutions. Uh, basically, all, every time we come up with a solution of a differential equation, it's an elementary function. Um, but many differential equations don't have elementary solutions, and so what do you do? You can still find a power series solution. Uh, it's just that that power series, most of the time, will not have this have any representation as an elementary function but in many cases that's good enough um <clears throat> so and and by the way before i get started i'm going to teach this through an example but um before i get started 11.1 I, I really encourage you to, to really just read the book um because it's a nice review of power series, which many of you probably have have barely seen in about a year. Like you probably talked about about power series in Calc two, and then probably not so much in Calc three. So it's probably been about a year for you. Then there's a few rules that you probably want to read and check up on. Um, and I, I I'm not going to talk about all of it as I do this example. I'll kind of talk about whatever I need for this example, but. So, so that's your that's your warning. I encourage you to to really read the book because that'll that'll help you, uh, because pro, you know realistically people forget this stuff over the space of a year. So what I'm going to do in this example, I'm going to do an easy example. Uh, this is one that we should know the answer to. Um, we could solve this differential equation on day one. I would expect um, a constant times e to the x as, as the solution to this differential equation. And that's what we're going to get. We're just going to do it through power series. And of course this, you know, why are we doing this the power series way if we already know the answer? Well, this is because I want to introduce the power series way. Um, the power series way isn't really that useful on this differential equation because this one can be solved another way. But the, this method that I'm teaching you can be used in, in situations when we can't get the answer any other way. Anyway, here we go. We assume that uh, y has a power series representation which looks like this. It's always a sum that starts at n equals 0, it goes to infinity, you have x to the n, and, and c sub n is your coefficient. Um, I have a first order differential equation, so I need to get y prime. I don't need y double prime or anything like that, but I do need y prime. So if you remember, how do I do the derivative of something like this? You basically, it's just sort of what you think. I mean, how do, how do you do the derivative of a power of x? You bring the power down and you reduce the power by 1. So that's all you do. There's a, a little funny thing that happens, though. If n was starting at 0 before, then now we should say that it's starting at 1. So why is that? There's a way of thinking of it. If I write out this first power series, there's c naught times x to the 0, which is just 1, plus c1x plus c2x squared, and so on. Um, 
when I do the derivative of this, looking at it this way, the C0 just disappears. C1, the derivative of C1x is just C1. The derivative of C2x squared is just uh, C2 times 2x. The next one would be C3 times 3x squared. I guess all, all I'm pointing out is, if I started at n equals 0 here, then I would have this weird term that looks like c0 times 0x to the negative 1. And we just don't want to worry about that, I guess. We, you can ignore it because n is 0, so this is 0. But also, I don't want to worry about x to the negative 1 because then I have to worry about if x is 0, then I'm dividing by 0, and it's we just don't want to worry about it. So formally, the quick way to, I mean, if you just want to remember, formally when we do the derivative, if n is starting at 0, then n is now starting at 1 for the derivative. Okay. So what does this differential equation say? This differential equation says the following. that this equals this, so this equals this. Right? <clears throat> um, what we can do here is equate coefficients, meaning the coefficient of a certain power of x here has to be the same as the coefficient of the same power of x here. But what I have now is not all that convenient because I have x to the n on this side, x to the n minus 1 on this side. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to re-index. I'm just going to write this sum in a different way. There is, and yeah, I already told you to review the book, but specifically um, this part, because Okay, so what am I saying here? This is the same as this. n will now be starting at 0, except... So, so it's, it's like here, I've bumped the values of n down by 1. So 1 becomes 0. And then here, I will bump them all up by 1. That's how I get this to be x to the n, which I like because that matches this x to the n. This and this are the same thing, by the way. You can see that if you look here, um, because what, what do I get? If I put in 0 for n, I get c1 times 1 times x to the 0, which is 1. So, so I, the first term, like this term is now corresponding to n equals 0. If I put in n equals 1, I'm going to get this. So let's check. If I put in n equals 1, I get, sure enough, I get c2 here times 2 times x to the 1, because n is 1. And yeah, so th this this and this are the same sum. This is just called re-indexing. And the way it works is you, you bump the limit down and you bump all the values of n inside up. Um, anyway, now that we're here, a lot of this is lining up. This is a sum from n equals 0 to infinity. This is a sum from n equals 0 to infinity. Um, I've got x to the n here. I've got x to the n here. So what I was talking about, where you equate coefficients, this equals this. So 
So what, what this is good for is we can get what we call a recursive formula, like I can solve for, oops, this is c sub n. I can solve for c sub n plus 1 in terms of c sub n. And so here's how this works. Um, we can, so, so assume that c, c0 is whatever it is. Um, we'll just call it C0. Then I can solve for C1 here. So C1 would be, um, to get C1, I guess I'm putting in N equals 0. Let me make that clear. When I plug in N equals 0, I get that C1 equals C0 over 1. When I plug in N equals 1, I get C2 equals c1 over 2, which if I, I would like to get all of them in terms of c0. So I got c1 in terms of c0, now I got c2 in terms of c0. When I put in n equals 2, I get that c3 equals c2 over 3. C2 is C0 over 2, so this is C0 over 6. And let me do one more. Some of you probably see the pattern already. When I do n equals 3, I get C4 equals C3 over 4. C3 was C0 over 6, so if I divide that by 4, I get C0 over 24. So what it looks like the pattern is... that Cn is just C0 over n factorial. And if we look in retrospect, that pattern makes perfect sense because if I look at the formula, each time I'm, I'm taking the last number and I'm dividing it by n plus 1. So, and, and look at how this works. I took the last number and I divided by 2 and I got this. I divided that by 3 and I got this. I divided that by 4 and I got this. This is how I'm getting an n factorial in the, in the denominator, because each time I'm dividing by the next number up, so the denominator just ends up being the product of like 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, all the way up to n. Um, so where are we? I guess I have barely enough room to write a conclusion. So why, if I go back... I was assuming that y is this, so that's a sum from n equals 0 to infinity, c sub n, and I'll write down what I got for c sub n, x to the n. That's our solution. And of course, the first thing I said is we already knew what the solution is, so why doesn't this look like what we got? Well, it is. It's just that what we got is in power series form. Um, this is another thing that I should point out to you. In the book, they have... Where are these? Yeah, there we go. Um, they have common Taylor series, which the, these should hopefully ring a bell, or at least... E to the x should ring a bell. I'm sure you talked about this in Calc 2. Sine and cosine also. Maybe cosh and cinch um, would... Maybe you had not talked about those, but that information is here anyway. Um, this one and this one you probably talked about, whether you remembered or not. <laughs> but uh, I, most people probably have forgotten it because it's, you know, like I said, it's been a year for everybody. Um, anyway, I can pull the C0 out of the sum, and then I get this, which is recognizable, that's, that's this one. So I got 
c naught e to the x. So we got it. It's just a constant times e to the x.